Lament is seen and heard. We cannot avoid it. Lament fills our space and to cry is utterly human. When we name our sorrow, our sin, our pain, we acknowledge our brokenness. Lament is an expression of sorrow, but it is also a form of prayer. How long, O oh Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? Psalms 13.1. We can bring all our anger, grief, sorrow, and complaint, all of it, unrestrained. Jesus can bear it. But how can we see in the darkness? How can we listen in the darkness? Are we seen? Are we heard? Psalms 42 tells us, my tears have been my food day and night. But how do we respond to lament? How does lament serve us in our brokenness? How does lament lead us? And what does lament lead us to? When we lament, we release the pain. Maybe for a moment, maybe for an hour, maybe for a day, maybe for a season, maybe forever. We hear the great blues singer of the Old Testament, Job, and that brother certainly had the blues. We hear him singing this blues line, why did I not die at birth? Throughout the Bible, there are images of lament and grief. David's lament over Saul and Jonathan, the blues of the weeping prophet Jeremiah, the deep sorrow of Naomi, Martha, Mary, and Jesus' loss of Lazarus. Jesus knew he would resurrect Lazarus, but he took the time to mourn his death. There are many images of lament and grief, but the greatest grief shown in the Bible delivers the greatest blues line uttered from the world's greatest blues singer. And I love Ma Rainey, and I love Bessie Smith, but the greatest the ultimate blues singer sings the greatest blues line ever uttered, ever moaned, ever sing, sung. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? In the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus shows us his true humanity. He shows us what struggle looks and feels like. He prays, he cries the blues, he moans the blues, and he becomes the blues for our sake. He honors the struggle and us by allowing us to see his tensions. Jesus, man of sorrow, who is acquainted with grief, is singing what W.E.B. Du Bois in the Souls of Black Folks calls the sorrow songs. But Jesus embraces the tensions. He embraces the pain and he embraces the grief. But why does God allow suffering? Why do we have so much pain and sorrow and loss? There are no ifs. You are so young, but you know by now in your short life, there are no ifs. We will suffer. We will have to endure loss, affliction, and grief. We will see the darkness approach and face the pain. We will have to endure, moan, and sing the blues. Lament, grief, and suffering, regret and pain, all of it is part of what it means to be human. But lament reaches out to us and confronts us. In some cases, it provokes us to try and embrace God, his promises as we ask the questions of why. In the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus gives us a precious, a real lesson in the area of struggle. He shows us his vulnerability and his transparency. He asks this question, this familiar question, can this pass? This, the God of the universe, is struggling to accomplish with love that what he greatly desires, and he still asks if this can pass? I was born in the Rambo years. Rambo 
I don't care if he was shot 50 million times and was struggling. He got up and won and was victorious. As a little kid, I didn't like Holy Thursday. I just was like, this is kind of a Rambo moment, Jesus. And we find you crying in the garden, like, defy the Romans and take over the throne. No, he shows us and he honors us with his humanity. And in doing so, identifies with ours. Jesus was deeply grieved. He was alone. He knew the answer to the question. He knew he would have to drink of the bitter cup, yet he still asked. He uttered the sorrow and his request, and after comfort sent by his father, he prayed, not my will, but thine be done. He rose and walked to the greatest suffering, to place of the greatest suffering this world has ever known. It is through asking and wondering and surviving the questions of why that we grow to understand the deep connection between sorrow and joy. It may be in facing our shadows, continuing to struggle, that our faith is strengthened. When our faith is tested and strengthened, we can fully embrace and know that God is here for us. God reveals himself in our lament. He is present in unexplicable ways in our suffering. God is present even in the midst of our ashes. So how can we love our neighbor? How can we care for others and create in a space in this broken world? We have to be actively present. We have to understand that suffering breeds us and points us to isolation and separation. But the lamenter needs to be heard. Create a safe space for others to express their suffering and grief. Give the great gift of listening, the act of sitting at the feet of those lamenting. Listen to each other even in silence and even through utterance and moans. Sharing our pain and our suffering is the way we can join together to comfort each other and to walk with each other. When we are able to share our griefs, our pains, our regrets, and suffering, we may also be present with each other. And it gives us the opportunity to experience unity in lament. It helps us to realize, to recognize, to remembering that our suffering is shared, that we are not alone. And it's in naming and voicing our suffering and our lament, we can comfort each other as well as, as, well as ourselves. Then the burden of lament and suffering is not being carried alone. We should not walk this journey alone. But God is at work in this behind the scenes in invisible ways ways we can't see ways we may never know and never see but lament is a form of protest lament is a form of protest that enables us to name what is tragic painful fearful wrong unjust and more Lament requires a journey from denial and avoidance to a place of acknowledgement and naming one's troubles and wounds. Our societies do not always support lament if we're truthful. Our Christian communities and our churches don't always support lament. Crying out our lament, our suffering, our pain opens us to seek help and healing. Grieving is part of what it means to be human. Lament is yelled, screamed, and moaned to God. When that happens, it shows that faith is still present. When people desire forgiveness and restoration, God remains. God's shalom is meant for all of us. Lament may call upon us to name our fears, but it also requires courage. Lament may call us to be vulnerable, but it also calls us to deal and engage with a society that does not support or care for those of us in lament. God's peace is meant for all humanity. 
But what does this mean? Redeemed beauty in the face of suffering, in the face of lament. What does it mean to create? The reality is we want to stay with the beautiful. We don't want to deal with the brokenness. We have a hard time seeing beauty in the midst of brokenness. But telling the truth in the midst of lament and sorrow is sometimes what brings people to our Savior. In the midst of 9-11 in New York, the churches, the lines, there were lines around the block to get into churches. Somehow, Americans, those that didn't know Jesus, knew that the church of Jesus Christ had the answer. And they lined up. There were churches that added two and three more services. People needed to lament of what took place on 9-11. What would have happened during this past summer, last summer, social unrest, racial unrest, if people inherently knew that the church had the answer for the lament and the strife and the tensions? There were no lines around the block. In the midst of suffering, grief, and lament, we look to the first and greatest artists who created out of nothing. In the midst of a broken world and a pandemic, beauty, creativity, imagination, and wonder continue to cultivate a path towards caring and loving each other. Creating matters, obviously you know that or you wouldn't be here today. Creating matters in a broken world, creating matters in a pandemic world, Creating shapes and reshapes us. Creating builds and rebuilds us. But lament is an inescapable, inescapable part of the human condition. You know this deeply. As creatives, we know the gift of creating allows us to communicate and transcend grief and loss. Creating is an act of resistance to all that is false. Imagination and wonder helps us to see with new and different eyes, and our souls are humbled by the mystery of these gifts given by our Father. Your art, your playing, shapes and reshapes. Your art, your music has the capacity to build and rebuild. So when able, create. Nietzsche said from Thus Spoke Zarathustra, and some of you have played that, I would only believe in a God who could dance or who would dance. At age 19, I'm a missionary's kid, daughter of a missionary's daughter, PK, and I needed to make sure I was not riding the coattails of my parents. And I took six weeks off. My mother had a fit. My father was like, go, because he had faith that that which was rooted and grounded in me would stand. And I took six weeks and studied different religions, not going with the crisis of faith. I wasn't in crisis, but I needed to know that I know that I know for myself. And I remember reading this quote from Nietzsche, and I thought, I'm glad my dad, God dances, by the way. But I, I can, what is it that I could not believe in a God? that would cause me not to follow. And after studying all these religions, I decided I could not believe in a God who hasn't suffered, in a God who allows all these terrible things to happen and doesn't feel it and doesn't know it and doesn't grieve and doesn't cry. When Jesus cried over Jerusalem, there was convulsions. When you study that word wept, there, his body was convulsing, 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 I can't say it, with, uh, with grief. His body was shaking with grief. I cannot, I will not follow a God who hasn't suffered. And that was the different. Every other religion I found did not have a God who suffered. Jesus says he will never leave thee nor forsake thee in the midst of your grief, in the midst of your lament, in the garden of your blues. Jesus goes before us and he goes with us. And he will continue to give us beauty and creativity in the midst of our own ashes, in the midst of our own lament, and in the midst of our own sorrow. Beauty redeemed, 
beauty redeemed in sorrow, creativity created, produced in sorrow? Yes, yes, yes. 